Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sabravivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Let's do this AEW Dynamite report here very quickly. Show it up with John Moxley versus Carl Anderson, IWGP United States Heavyweight Championship match. Moxley's first match back since literally sitting at home for a month with a baby on his chest, barely being able to sleep or work out. But man, he came back and he, he tore it up with Carl Anderson. They had a very, very good match. And at the end of the day, Moxley countered the gun stun, hit the uh, Rainmaker, Paradigm Shift, and got the pin. This is leading to another match for the IWGP U.S. title next week. It will be Moxley versus Lance Archer in a Texas death rematch for the IWGP U.S. title. Andrade called out the death triangle. I guess we'll see what they do there. Probably having to go through all three, maybe. I don't know. Ricky Starks won the FTW title from Brian Cage. Yes, I've had 50 people try to explain to me the finish. Whatever. Make up your own storylines if you want to. But he tried to use the belt. Hobbs wouldn't let him use the belt. He was so stunned that he was nearly pinned. And then the referee was distracted and Hobbs used the belt on Cage, and Starks won. I liked the match, but I was befuddled by the finish. Yeah, that was one of those, and we see it in wrestling all the time, so it's not like it's a finish that you've never seen before if you didn't see the show last night, but this is one of those things that mentally it's like you turned on your partner a half hour into a tag team match after you have saved him multiple times and this, that, and the other. It, it gave off that sort of vibe. That said, that was certainly counterbalanced by the fact that the fans during that match who made Ricky Starks the default babyface because he's from Texas and, and hails from New Orleans or, or something like that, whatever it is exactly, bottom line is he was who way over and the fans went absolutely nuts for that that match and i thought that was as far as the fans go being back in the building for aew outside of jacksonville that was the high point of the night for me yeah we'll talk about these fans in a moment i do like by the way that uh that finish we've now got uh, multiple people explaining it to me but they all have a different explanation that's not that's good. usually not a good thing no, no this no. person thinks that hobbs was trying to stop starks from getting dq'd that's why he took the belt away. And then this guy goes, no, he took the belt away because he wanted to be the guy that hit Brian Cage. So as I've, I've dealt with this before. We make up our own storylines because when you watch it, you're like, what the hell happened there? We had a Cody Rhodes Malachi Black segment where Cody called him out. He appeared on the big screen and did some sort of speech. And then Cody told him to get out to the ring right now. And Black said, I was hoping you'd say that. And the lights go out. He appears in the ring. They have a brawl. This place is going crazy for this brawl. The geeks run out to break it up. Fans are screaming, let them fight. They will fight, fear not. And they'll probably fight, and that'll be the end of Cody for a while because his Go Big show got renewed. So he's going to be disappearing a couple months from here. We had a uh, Hangman segment, which was great. He comes out, and he admits, yeah, I was, uh, I lost I my last match for the title. I, uh, I was, he's all, all sad. And then he goes, but the Dark Order is right. I do want that match. And he calls out the heels and all of the elite come out and they cut this promo on him. Matt Jackson, who legitimately has a stinger from the match last week, he gets in and cuts a promo on Hangman, takes a bump from a punch. Everybody hits the ring, it gets broken up, and we agree to an elimination match coming up down the road. It is the Dark Order versus the Elite. The stipulation, it's elimination, by the way. So we're going to have a lot of people doing jobs here. This is not this thing where, oh, he, you know, whatever. So the storyline is, if Hangman and the Dark Order win... Hangman gets a shot at Omega, and the Dark Order get a shot at the tag team titles. However, if the Elite win the elimination match, Hangman does not get a championship match, the Dark Order doesn't get a championship match, they're all out of luck. Fans were so into this stare down and the setup for this match here. We had a Jericho interview setting up next week. Next week, it is the first of the uh, gauntlet-style deal that Jericho has to go through. Next week, he has to face Sean Spears. The stipulation is that Sean Spears can use the chair, but Chris Jericho cannot. That's next week. We had Christian versus Matt Hardy, and they had a very good match because they're two very good workers. 
They had another baffling finish where Christian is on the floor, absolutely dead. He's been put in Matt Hardy's submission. He's done for. The referee gets to nine. He's still on his back at nine, by the way. That's how dead he is. The ref gets to nine. He leaps into the ring, and he kill switches him and pins him. Don't look at me. Good match, though. Britt Baker promo. And she's hyping up the match with uh, Nyla Rose next week. Uh, total babyface. 100% total babyface. Crowd's eating out of her hand. Uh, she's still, I think, going to largely be a heel. But this is a heel versus heel storyline. And she'll be the babyface in this uh, this situation here. Sammy Guevara beat Wheeler Yuta. It's basically Sammy's hometown. He was a uh, Spanish god and a hometown god. And in his hometown, they did not beat him. And not only did not beat him, but he won and he didn't get beaten up afterwards. Excellent. Yuka Sakazaki beat Penelope Ford with the Magical Girl Splash. And then in the main event, Darby Allen defeated Ethan Page. I can confirm... Both men are alive after this match. I'm not sure how they killed each other in this match. Everyone takes bumps on the steps like all the time. But when Darby Allen took the ego edge off the middle rope onto the steps, Mm. the steps actually bent around his body. I don't think I've ever seen that before with steel steps. He uh, ended up winning the match by putting him in the coffin. And then when the match is over, he goes up on the post and he does a coffin drop onto the casket, through the top of the casket, and onto Ethan Page. Do you guys know what wood is? Well, it's a, it's a substance, okay? And it, when it breaks, you end up with slivers and shards and sharp pieces. Well, all of those gouged poor Ethan Cage or Ethan Page after death, it appeared. They didn't, like, do the magic where, you know... You put the coffin next to the ring, and then there's a trap door, and the guy rolls under the ring, and then, you know, there's nobody in there for the coffin drop. No, this this bloke was in there for the coffin drop. And he got squished, and whatever else happened, there's there was blood during the match. This was a violent showcase of violence here. And these two guys have done this match on the indie scene, God only knows how many times. And they were so excited to be able to do it on national television. And you could tell, because they pulled out all the stops. So I thought an excellent show. Any thoughts, Mike? I thought it was excellent as well. At no point did the show drag. It's an AEW show, so there's always going to be a lot going on, but it was never too busy. It was never sloppy where you didn't where you didn't realize what was going on or there were too many people out there or they jumped from segment to segment too fast. There was none of that. And Much like the best Nitros always did, because we're still in a time where we go back to the Monday Night War era, either for WWE to pull back people that you can put on the screen again, or just people talking about AEW versus NXT or whatever. Since we always go back to that time, one of the best parts about Nitro was the fact that you got a little bit of everything on your show, and that's what you got with AEW last night. Christian Cage and Matt Hardy for as wonky as the finish was, Those guys were great with each other. Great experience working with each other for years and years. They built a storyline around it where Christian had never beaten Matt Hardy one-on-one. So they gave you a reason to care about that. They start the show hot with Moxley and Kingston coming down to the ring. People are going nuts. You go from that to set up Moxley's next title match against Lance Archer, which you've already got a naturally built storyline into. Andrade, yeah, sure. We got to do something as far as getting him over personality-wise maybe. But you know what as far as in the ring what can pull it out of him matches against Pac or Penta or Phoenix they can do that he wants the death triangle so are we going to get Phoenix and Andrade that sounds awesome on paper I don't care how disappointing Andrade's been so far you have a main event in what in can I say something about Andrade sure since you're on the topic yes listen everybody Andrade did not light the world on fire in that match that he had his his debut match with uh, Seidel Seidel looked better okay that's all fine and good he's had one match sky ain't falling (laughs) dude can we like let him have three or four matches and then decide like he's a total flop he's had one match so far no we have to judge everything right now I mean everyone might be right I mean he may end up being a total flop in AEW I don't know okay but I do know that the evidence we have of him being a total flop is he's had one match. 
Dude, it's when somebody jumps on a talking point that somebody has and decides to run with it, and that's kind of became a talking point, and people have just kind of built more and more onto it, whether it's actually there or not. So Cody Rhodes, I wonder how he is going to be put out of action. He has done a lot of tributes to his father and to old territorial wrestling. He had a strat match with QT Marshall that... Why? They, there was really no, no point to it. But when it comes to Malachi Black, I'm excited to see those two guys work with each other. But I'm also excited to see if there's a Road Warrior spike in the eye, if they continue that with Black's character. And that's what drives Cody Rhodes away. He can't even look at his little baby anymore. You know, he couldn't even do that because Malachi Black put him out and now he's got to go film, you know, go big show or whatever it is. So. I thought there was so much on the show last night that actually worked. Everything flowed really well. Guys that weren't on the show, like Miro, they got a chance to be spotlighted and highlighted. Britt Baker, you know, has got a match coming up next week. Just her presence on the show pops everybody. There's no way. Look, she's a great heel. She is so bitchy and witchy. She is fantastic. But the fans are never going to let her be a heel. It's just not going to happen. They're going to cheer everything that she does. Putting her in there with Nyla Rose, this is the time now to like solidify Britt Baker as a babyface. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.